Hello everybody, welcome to Chandler's Cottage. I'm Lisa Chandler and this is the first of our 2024 calendar bake shows. So every month, right through 2024, we are going to do a separate little demo for you for the bake in each of our calendar projects and the make in each of them as well. So kicking off in January, we are doing our South African themed month and we've got Mulva muffins and also a bird of paradise cushion. Now, if you don't have your calendar yet, I'll show you what this looks like. So this is what we'll be doing next up in our make demo. So in our calendar, you've got a little picture for each month. Um, I'll pop that up a little bit closer for you so that you can see. There you go. So here you can see we've got our cushion and we've also got our Mulva muffins down there. One thing, one thing about this photo for the calendar, this is the one I'm not happy with. So I'm glad we're getting this one out of the way first up for the year because when I filmed it and when I photographed it, I should say, I didn't have fresh apricots. And the only thing I had in the pantry was some of my Fowler's preserved peaches. So that's what went on top of them. But today, it's summer and I have got the apricots, so we'll talk about that later. In your calendar, which is still available on our website, of course, you've got all of your recipes just after all of the months finished. And I must say, thank goodness we're not doing the December one first. I might put you off for the year. It's not as hard as it looks, and I'm gonna tell you that all year until we get to it. So we've got our little recipe here. Uh, we've got the Mulva muffins on here, and we've got the February one here as well. What I want to do today is just take you through the basics of making these. It was a great one to do first up for the year because I tried to visualize where you would be at when I put the recipes together and, and what went where. You would think that I would put a warm, sticky muffin with a yummy, warm butter sugar, you know, sauce in the middle of winter. And I hope you still enjoy it then as well. But I thought about the holidays, convenience, we're all over cooking because we've been through the festive season. And these are a really easy make to do, perhaps with family members, grandchildren or whatever, over the holiday period. So that's why we're doing them first. And I think they can be enjoyed all year round. They also freeze really well. So that's why they're a great one to do now. You can probably just see on the screen, just the tip of them there, because I have made a batch ready to show you to save us some time today. So this is what they look like. They are just a lovely classic muffin. And yes, I did go through and check that they all came out easily out of the pan so I could impress you. See that little pit there? There's a little bit of a hole there. What it actually is, a nice little glob, I'm gonna call it a glob, or a little portion of apricot jam, and that's the secret ingredient that go into them. So that's what we're going to make up the mixture for. And then we can talk about the sauce and how to plate them up. So first of all, into our mixing bowl, again, super easy. We're going to pop, um, I think it's a cup and a half, a cup and a half of plain flour. I will confess, this, I actually went out yesterday and bought a heap of new, um, <laughs> a heap of new containers to put all of my flour into. I'll pull this one over here so you can see it. So this is what my flour lives in. It's just a basic container from Kmart. I went out yesterday and bought all these beautiful new containers as well from there to impress you with the lovely bamboo lids. And to be honest, if I'd actually used them, you would have known that it was just for show. So I'm not going to do that today. We're actually going to use the real ones that I use. I just did clean them up maybe just a little bit for you. So we need a cup and a half of plain flour. I'll pop my sieve over. I've just realized my half cup is AWOL, but that's okay, we'll use the quarter cup. So I'll put a, a cup and then I'll do two quarters to make up the half. There we go like that. We've also got to add baking powder. So this recipe, a lot of muffin recipes, of course, you get one or the other. You either get plain flour with baking powder and perhaps some bicarb, or you get self-raising flour. And when the recipe has been developed with this particular recipe over probably a hundred years, this is what has been developed. And I would imagine that this existed um, well before 
there was self-raising flour and you had to make up your own. So we've got, um, what have we got? We've got two, two teaspoons. I am very guilty of being pretty ad hoc with my measurements when it comes to flour and sugar and things because every recipe to me should have a little bit of leniency so I tend to be a little bit ad hoc when I'm adding but I don't when it comes to things like baking powder and bicarb soda because that's a little bit needs to be perfect they're a lot more intense um, and you got to be a little bit more careful. You just got to think about that. The smaller the quantity that you're putting in, it means that it's a more intense ingredient that you're adding in. So if you vary too much with that ingredient, it's going to make a big difference. All right, so we'll pop this in here. Um, now what we're going to do next is add in some brown sugar. The champion of this recipe is brown sugar. And we use a lot of it. So for the actual muffin, we need to put in half a cup. So I'm going to use my little quarter cup again. So put this in. I, um, it's quite daunting that this is the first that we are going to do of 24 demos for the year. And then I laughed to myself because in A Quilter's Life, we have just finished off 25 <laughs> demos for our advent calendar for the year. So, and it went so fast. And now I'm thinking, well, maybe I don't want this year to go too fast. But we will have a lot of fun along the way. I usually use a wooden spoon at this stage, but because our brown sugar is nice and sticky, that instead I'm going to use a, a metal spoon just to mix that in and break up any of the lumps. There we go. So, if you're watching this in January, I hope you had a fantastic festive season and that you had fun catching up with friends, perhaps some family as well, and some downtime. I find it's the most lovely time of year now, sort of between Christmas, New Year, and the first couple of weeks and into January, there seems to be that magical moment where you can find some extra time to try out some new recipes and some new techniques that you haven't tried before for your, for your craft, for your stitching, whatever you're doing. I'm gonna pop this aside for a minute and move this over. So what I have done, I've already uh, melted our 50 grams of butter. And so that's sitting in there. And into there, we're going to actually add the milk. So I've got my milk poured out here. See, I tried to be organized. I really did. What shall we use? I think I'm going to use a spatula for this so I don't damage the base of my saucepan. So we'll pop our milk in. We also need to add our eggs in. There's my girl's eggs. Shall we guess? This is probably Geraldine's. So we'll mix that one in. And this one, Penny's, actually that almost, that almost looks like a double yoker, so I'm not even gonna risk it. We'll use this one. So let's call this Franny's. We have been really busy in the garden at Chandler's Cottage. And uh, we cleaned up, or I should say, Rob cleaned up a corner of the garden this week. Um, that we didn't want to keep. And we found Geraldine has been, that's where she's been laying half of her eggs. So she's not very impressed at the moment that we actually removed her little hidey hole for her egg laying. All right, so I've got my eggs in. What am I missing? Apricot jam. So as I said, this is the key ingredient. Doesn't need to be flash, doesn't need to be yours. And I did giggle this morning. This is a Coles, I think, one in the fridge. It's just a no-name brand. And um, we have 20 kilos of um, apricots arriving next week. So hopefully, well, when I come back to make this again in winter, it will be with our own apricot jam. But honestly, it's, it's not worth wasting good stuff for this. It's really all about the flavor and those little pops of jam jelly that you get through the muffin as you eat it. All right, so we'll give this a little stir up just to try and get those ingredients through. You know what, I'm gonna take this out and I am going to grab, I will grab a fork, but I'm just gonna be super careful that I don't damage my saucepan. I have um, 
had a set of steel saucepans, as many of us had since we got married. And I still love them, but I just thought I perhaps needed something that looked a little bit less loved to film this year. So these are T4 ones, but uh, which are fantastic because they're non-stick, of course. But I just have to be so careful not to scratch the bottom of them and damage that non-stick non -stick surface. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we'll bring back over our... Well, this is so much fun doing this with you. Okay, we're going to bring this back over and we're going to pour it into the middle. Oh, no, we're not first. What did I forget? Are you reading your recipe as you go? And going, please, please, don't forget. I've got to put the bicarb in. And this is so important because it does that fizz thing like when you make an Anzac cookie. Biscuit. Did I just say cookie? Biscuit, biscuit. And again, be sure that you get this nice and accurate. You don't want too much. One thing, um, there's a balance with that bicarb, isn't there? It's there to aerate and give you the texture. But if you overstep it, then you get that bitter aftertaste. You can often taste with commercial muffins. So we just want to be really careful. Now I'm going to lift this up for you so you can have a look. See how it's starting to foam? And that's the magic that we want. So it's got that clear or paler colour. It's all bubbly and going foamy, which is fantastic, which is what we want it to do. With the butter, I've said to cool it down till it's just lukewarm. You don't want it super cold when it would reset, but you want a little bit of warmth to help to get, activate that bicarb. Okay, now I'm going to pour all of it in to the well that we've got in the middle of our mixture. I'm sorry, you're around the wrong way, aren't you? I'll put it down that way. Can't see. All right, there we go. Put that off. And then we'll give this a nice mix through. Because we are activating that bicarb in there, you don't want to overmix it because it's giving us all these lovely little fine air bubbles. And so if we overmix, we'll start to pop them all. So just slowly fold it all through. And if you stand here, have a cuppa, and just, just for a minute, you can see the magic happen because you start to get all these lovely little bubbles forming up in the mixture. Not sure if I can hold that up for you to see, but they're just all starting to form around the edge in there. And as you start to pop them into your muffin tin, you'll see it as you break up the mixture. When you cut it through with a spoon, you'll be able to see all those lovely bubbles. Okay, now this mix is enough to make 12. What I suggest you do, I'll pop this one over here. What I suggest you do as you go is perhaps put a generous uh, tablespoon in each one. Do that first so you've got an even mixture through all of them. Then go back and see what you've got left in the bowl and it might be, okay, it looks like I've got maybe 12 teaspoons or so left and then go back and evenly put a top up on each one. So a, a really generous tablespoon is about what you're going to need to just half fill each of your uh, little muffin tin. I made mine, just get rid of these, I did mine without any liners or anything in my muffin tin. This tin's, okay, this tin's not that old and I have to confess I went to get it out this morning and I had been so slack before Christmas, I'd bought a new tin and I'd ripped off the label and there was still bits of the label on there so I had to soak it this morning so that <clears throat> you didn't see how very, very lazy I was. So these ones here have been made without anything in them. It's a nice non-stick pan. You need to lightly grease just with the oil spray and they've come out really nicely. Now, if you don't have a really good one in the cupboard, and a lot of us, what is it about muffin tins? We get extremely attached to them. If you decided that you wanted to use an old tin that perhaps is not as non-stick as it used to be, then I would love you to use instead, not one, but two little cups. So he would have come out. Is it a he or a she? Let's call it a he. He would have come out 
a little bit smaller. Is that going to go in there? Yeah. He would have come out a little bit smaller and narrower, but he'd still be fantastic. You might need to just drop your mixture just a little bit for that one, okay? So he'd come out in one of those. The reason that it's great to have them in the tin, it's sorry, in the little patty pan, because for the next step, if you wanted to, you could give it to somebody with all of its sauce already in there and then these two little cups that's why I'm saying go for the two I haven't got my glasses on so I can't actually tell if I've got two or three there oh I've got three you could actually serve it up like that with the sauce over the top when they come out warm from the oven you're going to go around with your little skewer and look do all those normal things that we've always learned to do just check they're cooked through before you take them out of the oven do the swivel Make sure it comes out clean. But lots and lots of holes over the top. And then it is ready for us to pour our very, very wicked runny sauce over. I pop that there. I've made up the sauce ready because I just want to run through some of the little tricks that I would suggest for serving this up. And it is super easy to make. You just throw all the ingredients in this time Two whopping cups of, cups of brown sugar are going to go in with a cup of cream and a cup of boiling water and a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm not snobby about my vanilla. I just use stock standard queen. But whatever you like to use, but I love this uh, vanilla extract because I go through so much of it and it can get quite expensive. So this is, I'll take that out for a minute. I'll sit that in there my sticky, sticky, sweet sauce. About now you're wondering if this recipe is really like a sticky date pudding without the dates, and it is. It is a lot like that. So that is it. Isn't that just disgusting and good and brown? So for this little one, first of all, and I would, um, to get maximum absorption, absorption through your muffins, You'll want your muffins warm and you'll want your sauce warm. But I have been known to sneak a bit cold from the fridge. Okay, and then we're just going to pour it over. And you can see all those little holes are just absorbing all of it. And if I pour it on too quick, look at that. It's just, it's all going down and sitting. I can feel it warm under my hand. That is so good. It is sitting and swimming in those little cupcake patties. Yeah. So that one's really good. Let me, um, let me just put that down. So that good to go individual serves, serve that up. Oh, so many things you could do, but I'm going to save one of them in a minute to show you. The other great thing about this recipe, and particularly to have this time of year, they will freeze. And you can freeze them with the sauce or without. So if you're going to save them to serve up to friends, just make the muffins and pop them in the freezer. If you want to have one of those ready to go out for a really good treat for a, a school lunch or to send off to work with hubby or to take with you to your quilting group, whatever you want to do, Actually freeze it with the sauce in, let it defrost, and just give it a few seconds in the microwave to warm it up and that's going to be delicious. All right, so that's that one. Another idea for you is to serve it up, again individually, but for outside or inside eating. So I'll move that out of the way. I've got a couple of ideas for you. First of all, let's just face it, what's going to happen tonight? Rob and I are going to have one, aren't we? On the couch, like sloths in front of the television at about nine o'clock when it's too late to eat that sort of stuff and you get indigestion, when you go to bed and the sugar rush, all those things we know we're not supposed to do, but we're going to do it anyway. So I'm going to take this bowl and we'll pop one of them in like that. We'll pop all our little holes in. So I would make sure this is warm before I pop it on. And then I'm just going to pour the sauce in. Oop, dropped a bit. This little ladle is great. Um, I, I have to confess to you, there is, except I'm dripping all the time. I will confess to you that there are designs to have a little home, uh, a little cottage and garden section on our website soon. Just if I come across some really good kitchen utensils and things that I think you might like to use, even spice blends and things like that, we've had the uh, okay here in the Chandler's Cottage Kitchen to do now, then 
um, I will let you know if we've got them on the website. I'll just give that a wipe. Okay. I'm just going to serve that like that. And then we're just going to drizzle. See the cream? This is leftover Christmas cream. So I'm just going to pour that right round. And the nice thing is the consistency between your standard cream and that sauce is going to give you a lovely pattern in the bowl. So you can just get really fancy and whack your little sardé stick through there again and create a pretty little pattern if you feel the need. But there is something just gorgeous about sitting on the couch. You know, you pull your feet, your knees up and your feet up underneath your tush and you sit there with this beautiful warm bowl of something very, very wicked just to have. And it's gone in a flash, but my goodness, the anticipation before you eat it is just priceless. So that's another one. Now, our kids are getting to the age where they are grown up, kind of, they're adults. You know what I mean. And uh, we do have a fire pit here. So I thought if they were all here with their friends or their girls or whatever it is, it'd be so cool to take out some of these to, to have there, or perhaps around the barbecue late at night when it's starting to cool off. I found these great little pans, and this is one of the examples I want to get these in for us. And I think these would be just perfect to serve up the muffins in. So look at them, they're all shiny. We had uh, Christmas day, we had our homegrown potatoes all crisped up in the oven with sea salt and rosemary piled up in these around the table. And the great thing about them, even if they get really hot, if you've got something really hot in there, you've got the handle on the side as well. So let's pop these in here. I have to do all four to show you, do I? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't, I probably only need to do one. Let's do, let's do two. Hey, let's just do two. All right, so first up, you know what, I'm going to put the sauce in first. So I'm going to do, put these. Take out any frustrations you've got for the day with your satay stick. There we go, like that. And then we'll pour our sauce in. I suppose if you're going to take these out in the dark, you'll need to warn them, warn the kidlets that there's sauce in there. So they don't spill it. Okay. So that I go over the top like that. You know what I'm going to do now? Come on, you must know. Come on, take yourself back to your childhood. Do you know, my mum did not know this stuff existed until December. And she now has the plain one and the chocolate one in her fridge. They don't contain all the bad stuff they used to. And they're actually really light on calories, so it's not a bad thing either. Okay, so what we're going to do is just this. Find the little button. There we go. Like that. And I would very gleefully and smugly carry out a tray of those down to the fire pit with a spoon on the side. Perhaps some little wedges of a shortbread left over from Christmas or something, some well, if you've got some berries left over. You know what I think would go really nice in here? Would be some stewed spiced apple as well, just to kind of, I don't know, cut through the fat a bit like I wrote in the calendar. So that's just another one for you. And then finally, finally, we'll put those there. Um, if you've got friends over for dinner, and sometimes it can just be the four of you, you could plate them up and make them look a little bit special. Can you see I'm trying to pick four that are about the same size. So that together and we'll grab our icing sugar. I've just realised, I'm wondering if you've actually spotted, I've been really naughty today and I've got bare feet. I hope you can't see my feet. Goodness. I'll remember that for next time. Okay, so we'll icing sugar over the top, like that. Pop that back in there. Can I show you this container? I'm trying to be so professional, but I can't help sharing. This container here, there's another one of these Kmart ones. It's been repurposed, and it used to be um, in our shop when we had the Benina dealership. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what's on the other side. You're gonna die. 
570 QE. I must have kept all of the feet for <laughs> the 5 Series in this one and it's been cleaned up and repurposed. I think um, some serious need for some revisiting the pantry and the containers that we're using before I see you next month. Okay, so with this one, fresh or perhaps lightly stewed apricots just to, to play up that whole bit that this is laced with apricot jam. Apricots are Robert's absolute favourite. So when that 20 kilos arrived, I'm expecting to be left with about 15 to make jam out of and I'll stew some and preserve them. We'll also do some apricot, um, apricots in brandy, I think. Here we go. Maybe I'll pop a couple on top, like the photo that I don't like, but at least they're fresh now. Okay, so we'd have all those done. And then instead of pouring it over the top, what I would suggest, just for a little bit, just for a little bit of drama, just a bit of drama, when you serve it up to friends, I'll put that little bit, actually I'm gonna stick him over there. Put it on top of that one, there we go. All right, just for a bit of drama, for your friends, uh, we shall pour some of this sticky sauce into a jug. This sauce is, you know, it's got dairy in it, but it's got an absolute heap of sugar. And I can confidently say you can keep this in the fridge for a, for a week. Keep it nice and chilled in the fridge and you'll be able to sneak in there and have it. <clears throat> we actually have some cherries um, in our fridge uh, in a bowl left over from a couple of days ago. And I was so wicked this morning. I grabbed a cherry and dipped it in the sauce. It was really good. Okay, there we go. So what I would do is um, I would sit this on the side like that. And then when I take it to the table to serve up. Do you love this board? I love this board. This is my Christmas present from Stephen. He actually made it for me. I just think it's amazing. He's amazing with what he's doing. Okay, so are you ready? I'm gonna pop that one up there too, like that. We bring it to the table with the jug, looking really flash, and then come through and pour it over. And it just looks so impressive because where it hits the icing sugar, it's gonna create that beautiful little marbled pattern on the top. So, um, I hope, oh, you're gonna stay up there. There we go. So, there you have it. Super easy to do. I really hope you have fun making some up. And as I said, can you hear that? It's pouring rain. <laughs> as I said, they're great to make and stick in the freezer. So even if you do just wanna use up brown sugar that you had in the house to make things for Christmas that didn't get made, this is a really good option for something to make up. Now, the next thing or the next part of this month is our cushion. So if you wanna pop over and have a look at the make demo, this is what I'm going to be making. And I think I'm going to need a cup of coffee and one of these muffins while I'm actually doing this, all right? As I said, if you haven't grabbed your calendar yet, it is available on the Chandler's Cottage website. If you just like uh, the pattern, for the cushion that we're doing in the make section. You can grab that um, pattern individually from our website as well. And at the moment, we still do have complete kits available on the website of both the calendar and the 12 kits to make all of our projects this year. So I hope you really enjoy January and I look forward to seeing you in the make section, but of course also on the 1st of February for our next project and recipe. All right, bye for now, thank you.